Representational Systems Human beings input, output, and process information about the territory around us. This information is coded by our five sensory systems. Our five senses are the language of our brain. Our five sensory systems are visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, gustatory. The NLP term for these five sensory systems is representational systems. Experience is translated into words when people communicate. Language is a representation of our sensory representations, a map of another map. Words do not have a built-in meaning. Words only derive their meaning because they trigger sensory representations in a speaker or listener. Did you know the eye accessing cues or clues enable us to recognize that somebody may be thinking in images or sounds or feelings or through self-talk? This is very valuable as a means of understanding them and improving how you can communicate with them. However, one of the most important applications of this model is when their eyes are moving. Hence, always keep in mind that while the other person's eyes are moving, you remain quiet and allow them to think. This is because when their eyes are moving, they are thinking and not listening to you. Eye movements indicate that a person is thinking and that they are processing information. They are likely to be going through their images, sounds, feelings, and have a silent inner conversation. If you talk over this and don't give them thinking space, you interrupt their processing. Interrupting their processing may lead to decrease in the quality of your interaction with them, frustration of the other who is thinking person, showing that you are selfish as trying to impose on them your pace of thinking and speaking. Submodalities. The fine distinctions that we make within each representational system is known as submodalities. Hence, they help us remember what we have seen, heard, felt, smelled, and tasted, both externally and imagined. Submodalities are the smallest building blocks of our thoughts because we code our memory of sensory experience using these building blocks. This is the way our brain tells us something is important or not, or somewhere in between. When we change a submodality, it can give us control over our internal experience. So, they help to add flexibility to our thinking. So, when we change our thinking, when the coding is changed, so the meaning is changed. When the meaning changes, our state changes. When our state changes, our responses change. Our behavior is determined by our state. When we do different things, we can change our reality and our personal world. The main use of submodality patterns is for changing states. Submodality distinctions. The following are a few examples of submodality distinctions. Visual, auditory, kinesthetic, and olfactory and gustatory. Let's look at each one of these in detail. Visual, brightness, size, shape, location, distance, contrast, focus, clarity, movement, speed, perspective, framed or panoramic, orientation, density, transparency, color, and black and white. Auditory, pitch, tempo, volume, rhythm, timbre, clarity, location, distance. Kinesthetic, pressure, location, frequency, texture, temperature, intensity, and vibration. Olfactory and gustatory, the changes in intensity and or duration of particular tastes or smells that are relevant in someone's experience can be quite useful. Odors and tastes are very powerful anchors for states. 